Hi DIYers, Sterling with Alarm Grid here and today we have another day in our Alarm Grid lab where we're going to show you programming videos for all sorts of Honeywell 5800 series sensors to the ELF 7000 Lynx Touch alarm system. So we have already shown you everything to the old 5100 and of course the new 52 and the 7000 panels that are out now. The screens are very similar, but we want to show you the slight differences that you have when you're going to be programming all your sensors to this new system. So we're going to start with some of the more popular sensors, and we're just going to go down the line and show you what the sensor would do, the right application for the sensor, and how to program it to the L7000. So we're going to start with our 5816 Honeywell door and window sensor. This is the most popular door and window sensor offered by Honeywell. Most alarm companies that sell the L7000 in a kit, you're going to get these 5816 sensors in the kit. That's why it's the most popular. Um, on our site, most of our kits, we actually use the 5811 sensor, which is a little bit smaller than this 5816. Um, but this is a very, very popular sensor, least expensive sensor as well, um, which is important. And it does have some functionality that the 5811 does not have. So... Um, there may be the right application for this even if you were looking at the 5811s. So we've got our sensor. I popped the cover off. You can see the circuit board. You can see what's important about the 5816 is that it has these two internal screw terminals. While the 5811 is simply a sensor with a magnet, this 5816 can act as the sensor with a magnet just simply to show doors opening and closing or you could use this as a wireless transmitter where you would simply mount to the wall and you, from these two terminals you would route down to an external door contact, a wired door window sensor, and then you could use this just as a simple wireless transmitter to talk back to the Lynx Touch. Your wired detector or your wired door contact would detect if the door or window's opening. It sends a signal with a wire to here and then the 5816 communicates with the panel. So that's a unique feature of the 5816. A couple other sensors do that as well, um, but that's one of the more popular uh, reasons why someone would get a 5816. So we're gonna, we have our CR123A 3-volt lithium battery, which we're using to power our, our sensor. So we simply insert the battery, and we are now ready to program. You'll notice here, we've got this wire around the top is the wireless transmitter uh, Antenna, uh, antenna wire um, for transmitting the signal. This silver dongle here is the tamper switch. When the cover is closed, it's holding down the switch so that the detector is happy. If someone were to pop your cover, it would alert you that someone was messing with your sensor and cause a tamper trouble. Um, in the alarm state, that would be a full alarm. We also have our magnet and our spacer in case you need uh, to pull the magnet off the wall a bit. And we've got our, our mounting screws, which it comes with. So it also comes with double-sided tape for easier mounting. To program the sensor, it's very simple. We're going to use the serial number on this sticker, um, or we can also do the auto-enroll mode, which, uh, same idea, you have a sticker here and a sticker here. Both of them show you the serial number you use to program the sensor. So, whenever we're doing our programming on our Lynx L7000, this is our home screen. You'll notice we have security, automation, and video. We're gonna go into security, more, and tools. Once you go to tools, you're asking the panel to go into the master programming section or the installer programming section. For programming sensors, it's the installer code. 4112 is the default installer code, gets you into the programming. Okay, so now that we're in programming using our installer code, we go to program, that jumps into the deeper level programming screens. And to do any sensor programming, you have to jump into the zone section of programming. From zones, you can see on any new L7000, always zone one is a wired zone input only. So you would not use that for any wireless device. There are screw terminals inside the panel, so if you did have one wired zone that you wanted to bring back to the panel, you would program it from zone one. The rest of the zones are used for the wireless sensors. You'll notice that front door, back door, window, and motion sensor 
are already template shelled out when you first turn on your panel. That's because most systems are sold in a kit where you get three sensors, a motion, and a key fob, and that's what these zones are for. So we don't want to confuse you with that programming. We're going to go ahead and start on the next available zone, zone six, but you absolutely can start on two and just edit what's there and set it to the parameters you need for your sensor. So we're going to jump into six. You select the zone you want to edit, and you have the option then to click edit, which takes you into the zone programming screen. On this screen, the first thing you always want to do is jump into the serial number box. You'll notice that on your sensor on the outside, there's a barcode sticker that starts alpha with a seven digit number, 0291072. That same serial number is on the inside sticker, same thing, alpha 0291072. You never need to type the alpha, but that just shows you you're looking at the right sticker. And you have two options now. One is to just manually input the serial number by using the keypad one through nine and zero or you can activate the sensor, meaning open the door three times or whatever sensor you're using, you know, simply activate the sensor three times to auto enroll the sensor. You have to be into the serial number box to do that auto enrollment. Um, it makes a little bit easier. You, first of all, you can't make a mistake typing it in and better than that, it validates that the sensor and the magnet are working because if you can auto enroll it and the panel picks it up, We've done two things. We've now programmed it properly and we know the sensor works. So that's what we're gonna do. On this 5816, it might be tough to see in the shot, but directly below this battery is your reed switch, your mercury reed switch. This is the device that detects when the magnet is close to the sensor or when it's pulled away. On the outside of the 5816, there are two hash marks on the plastic here, which line up perfectly with the magnet. That shows you that the magnet need, needs to be installed on this side. And you just heard it beep, it detected the magnet being close, and when I pulled it away, that was one fault of the device, one activation of the device. We need two more activations to get it to program. So we're gonna put the magnet back, we're gonna pull it away. That's our number two activation, which you can see inputs the serial number, as well as the applicable loop number for this sensor. We talked earlier about how you can wire a device to this internal screw contact. If we had wired a device and we faulted that device as opposed to the reed switch and the magnet, it would have populated for loop one. Loop one is what you would use if you're programming that this is supposed to just act as a transmitter working with an external contact. When you're using it with the magnet and the sensor as a contact itself, you'll always want to use loop two with the 5816. So we've done two activations. We're going to do one more, put the magnet to the spot, pull it away and auto enroll the sensor. We have our serial number correct at the top, 0291072. We have our proper loop number two as we're using the magnet with the device. And now we want to name our zone. So the panel allows you to name a zone with three different words. Zone descriptor one is first word, zone descriptor two is second word, and device type is third word. So we're gonna actually do device type first. We're gonna do this as our front door. So we're gonna select door, and then we're gonna clarify which door by using the zone descriptors. You go into zone descriptor one, and you have your keypad. To select the word you want to use, you type the first letter of the word. Factory. That takes you to the top of the list of words that begin with the letter F. For us, we want front door. We can either Failure. hit the down arrow to cycle through every F word, or we can hit the next letter of the word. Freeze. Takes you to the first FR word. Do that one more time. Front and we're to our F-R-O-N-T front door. So we've already programmed door. We now have front as our clarifier. And when the zone is activated, the panel will speak front door. If you had two front doors, front door left, front door right, you could use your zone descriptor two Rear. to further clarify right. which door is which. So now we have front, right door. It will say all three words when the zone is activated. For us, we just have one. 
we're going to clear out the door, uh, the right, and we'll just have it say front door. So you don't have to put two descriptors. That's only so you can designate every device discreetly so you know what's what. When programming to the Lynx Touch and using wireless sensors, every sensor is a zone. So this is our zone six front door. Now we have to decide how do we want this sensor to act. We can do response type. Because we've selected door first on the device type, the panel is showing you the most common 90% of the time you're going to use one of these response types. For us, our front door is the door that we use when we enter and exit the home, and therefore we need it to have a delay. Entry exit 1 will follow the entry delay time of the entry delay one program setting and it will follow the exit delay. So if we enter our front door we have 30 seconds to get to the keypad and turn the system off. So that's what we want for this door. If this was a rear door that we didn't use for uh, when the system is armed you would have selected perimeter to zone type. That means the alarm is triggered immediately when the zone is activated. But again, because we're going to be using this door to come and go, we need to have the delay. You have the last three questions are alarm report. That means, do you want the sensor to go to the central station? Is your system monitored? If so, do you want this sensor activation to report to the central station? For our cases, we of course do. Chime is what tone from the panel do you want to hear when the door is opened? So you can select and there are many different chime tones that they've introduced on the L7000. So you can actually you can actually choose the exact tone or how you want the, the chime to sound when the door is activated in the disarm state. I'm going to go back. Disabled would say no chime at all. If you had a specific zone that you didn't want to chime, you could disable the chime. For our cases, we're going to use standard. The last question is supervision. And supervision means, will the panel check for this device and say, are you there? And it does that every 12 hours. We always recommend that you have your sensors set to supervise so that if it lost a battery or somehow got destroyed, the panel would know and it would give you an indication that you have a trouble on your zone six front door. Uh, supervision problem means that it's either out of range or has been destroyed for some reason so that the panel's not seeing the sensor as, as being active in the home anymore. So again, you want to make that supervised, which it defaults to. So now that we've entered all of our parameters and we have it set the way we want, the most important thing is to save it because if you just backed out, we'd lose everything we just did. Save the sensor. You can now see zone six front door is showing as a program zone. And if we want to test to make sure it's working, I'm going to first put my cover back on so I don't get a tamper fault. Now that we have the sensor closed up, we can see here the two hash marks are where the magnet goes and we're going to simulate the door opening. So we're going to exit to the home screen. You hit the back arrow to go back to the top level programming screen back one more time, we'll exit out of programming. Anytime you exit programming, they ask the question, do you want to allow the installer to get back into programming? As you're going to be the installer for your system, you would always say yes. You don't want to lock yourself out of programming. And then here, we're out of programming, but we're still in this screen. Back out one more time to the home screen. So now, we're going to put our magnet next to our sensor. We have our door closed in this case, and now we're going to open our door. Front door. You can see that the panel spoke the two words we had programmed in, front and door, and you can see that it's showing the zone is faulted, and it shows the specific zone that's faulted. So if you were trying to arm the system and you saw that it was not ready to arm, you would know, okay, I have to address my issue my front door is open. You go to the close the front door. The fault immediately, without having to do anything at the panel, clears and the sensor and the zone is happy and the panel is ready to arm. So that is how you accurately program a 5816 sensor to the L7000 panel.